Hello everyone and welcome to this Chess Secrets video covering a fifth episode of Chess Tactics and Pattern Recognition. And so studying tactics and learning to recognize tactical patterns is a great way to improve your chess. So in this position, uh, it's white to move. Take a look at this and ask yourself what you would do in this position here. Uh, with white. So if you need more time, uh, just feel free to pause the video. Uh, if not, uh, let's take a look at this. But before I go to the answer, uh, let me first show you a few tactical patterns that will help you solve this position. All right. So if we take a look at uh, this next video here, excuse me, this next position. Uh, what would you do in this position here? So uh, here it's white to move. And what do you think is happening in this position? So we see the queen is up here hovering around the king, cutting off escape squares. Uh, so hopefully in this position uh, you'll be able to find the move. It may be a little tricky, but it is an interesting pattern that's valuable to know and learn. So if we look at the evaluation, white is ahead, and it looks like the winning move is knight to c6 here. So after this knight to c6 move, the queen is under attack, uh, but the threat is to jump this knight to e7 here which would put the king in check, and the queen is cutting off any escape on the h-file. So uh, this is the pattern to know here, to jump your knight into a position where it can move up uh, here to the seventh rank and attack the king in combination with uh, a rook or a queen cutting off any escape here on the h-file. So uh, that would be you know, the winning move, a threat of mate, or capturing the queen here. All right, so keep that in mind, and let's take a look at this next position. All right. All right. So this should be easy. Now that you know this pattern that we just looked at, uh, what would you do here? So uh, you should see that the king is in the open and the queen would be able to move over here with check, cut off the escape. And once the king moves to the only square available, g8 uh, up here, well, then we have that knight to c6 move attacking the queen and threatening mate here on e7. So, with those two positions in mind, if we go back and take a look here at the initial position, uh, you should be able to figure it out. And the first move... Uh, there are two options that work here. So if you looked at this position initially and you thought maybe immediately going to knight to c6, that would work as well. Uh, but maybe bishop captures on h7 is a little more forceful uh, as it immediately checks the king. So we'll take a look at both of those. So another tactical pattern to uh, remember is whenever you have an opportunity to sacrifice your bishop with check up here. So uh, this move captures a pawn, uh, and the computer says that you know it's possible for the king not to capture that, but then he would be in even more trouble. So in this position, it's best for the king to just capture, and then you follow up with the queen check, uh, then the king would have to retreat back. 
then that knight move attacking the queen and threatening to jump in here with a mate. And so if we uh, look a little bit further uh, and play this position out, it looks like the computer recommends g6. Uh, so that attacks white's queen, but then the queen can just move up here one and renew the threat of jumping here to e7 with a mate. So uh, now, you know, maybe black would be forced to capture the rook with check here, and then after a recapture, uh, rook at f to e8 to prevent mate. And now uh, the rook would just jump up here, threatening to capture this knight. And if the knight retreats and attacks, well then uh, the rook could just move down here, uh, perhaps threatening to jump over to h4 and you know cause another mate threat. Uh, so this could be played to help fight that and attack the rook at the same time. But you know white could still press the attack. Black would have to block. Uh, but now. Queen to g5 could be played, threatening to capture this knight. So uh, white is ahead in material here and uh, is pressing forward with an attacking position against this uh, black side who's just playing defense. Uh, so if we take uh, one more look at this position from the beginning, uh, the thing to remember is... Uh, Whenever you have a chance to sacrifice a bishop, uh, take a look at that to try and see if it works. You'll have to calculate a little bit. Um, and for those of you that thought knight to c6 immediately should be played, it looks like that works as well. So if instead of sacrificing the bishop, knight to c6 were played attacking the queen immediately, uh, Perhaps then queen to h4 would be played to cover this sacrifice of the bishop. Uh, and then, you know, maybe rook to e5 could be played, threatening to jump over to the h-file and attack the queen. Um, and then oh, also the rook was attacking this knight, which was unprotected on c5. So the knight could jump up here, attack the rook, uh, but then we have an attack with rook to h5, and the computer says the best move is to go ahead and give up the queen. And then, you know, after the recapture, now the knight can jump in here and attack the queen, but white would just be ahead in material in this position. So, back to the initial position. It looks like bishop sacrifice here on h7 or an immediate knight to c6 works uh, but it looks like bishop sacrifice on h7 is a little bit better and then after the king captures um, here we have king takes and the follow-up with the queen the king would have to retreat uh, knight to c6 attacking the queen and threatening mate uh, and the computer recommends the best move here is to just go ahead and uh, move the knight to d3, which would just give up the queen here. And you know, after a recapture, now white is just ahead in material. All right, well, I hope you were able to figure that out and uh, just keep in mind and look out for those patterns and tactics of uh, sacrificing the bishop on h7, and also being able to jump the knight up here to e7, uh, which would put the king in a checkmate if the h-file is covered like it is here with this queen. So keep that in mind. And I'll take a look at one more position here. Uh, so let's look at this next problem, which was interesting. Uh, all right, so here, let me flip the board as it is black's turn to move. You can look at it from white's perspective or black, but in this position, it's black's turn to move. And we see that white has pinned black's queen to the king. 
So let me flip the board. Black's perspective here. Uh, the queen is pinned by this bishop and attacked by the queen here. So it looks like black could be in trouble. Uh, but what would you do here to turn the game around? So take a look at this. All right, pause the video if you need more time. If not, let's see how the game continued. All right, so it is a mate in five for black in this position. So hopefully uh, that'll help you figure this out. Um, I could do the patterns of you know drilling the uh, moves one at a time, uh, but I'll just say that uh, instead of doing that, I'll just say to remember this move here, uh, knight to e2, checking the king and pushing it onto the h-file, but now we see that the h-file is not open. So that should give you a hint on what to do here. So let's take a look at it. All right, so uh, the best move, the winning move, is knight to e2 here. So once again, that move where the knight jumps up uh, to the seventh rank here and attacks the king. Although this time the king can just move and the h-file is protected by this pawn for the moment. So to take care of that problem, black sacrifices a rook. And now the only move is to capture uh, but then the other rook can just jump over here with check. And now white is really in trouble uh, as you know everything leads to a maiden two. So what can be done um, you know if there's a block here, uh, well then we just have queen to h4 mate. So that is one option. Uh, another, option if we go back here uh, let's say queen to h6 is played well then uh, the rook could just capture here and then you know after this bishop move capture once again the queen can just move in here uh, and deliver a mate with the knight covering uh, these escape squares on g3 and the queen covers that as well so if instead this was a rook on h4, it would work as well because this knight covers g3 and g1 here. So an interesting little pattern of controlling and attacking down the h-file uh, and using the knight here in a position to cut off any escape for the king. All right, well, just remember to regularly study tactics and try and learn uh, pattern recognition by going over tactics again and again until you kind of drill them into your memory. And then hopefully you'll be able to use them more often in your own games uh, to attack and to win and also to defend against your opponent's tactics. All right, well, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to leave comments or suggestions. And uh, also set it up so you can receive notifications of new videos if you would like. Um, you know, I hope I don't put out too many and then you get tired of all the notifications. But if you like those videos, uh, check out more of them. Thank you everybody and have a great day.